Good morning and uh, greetings, particularly to the youth of India. I shall be sharing in a series of videos in English some very basic thoughts and insights from which I hope that young people may benefit. It's been my singular good fortune to have had the opportunity to minister to young people throughout my working life as a teacher placed in the domain of higher education. I have a very special concern for and excitement about the glorious potentialities enfolded in the youth. Therefore, the thoughts that I'm going to offer through the series of videos, commencing with this one, are so made as to provide insights into the deeper meanings of life, the larger possibilities of your personality, and the ways by which one may take better care of oneself which is unfortunately the one respect in which most people fail. And I speak as one who has to some extent failed. And I also want to tell you that one learns a great deal from one's failures. What's important or what is lamentable is not really that one fails or falls. What is lamentable is that one does not learn anything from one's experience, particularly from these unfortunate and regrettable experiences. And I'm grateful to God for this wisdom given to me to learn from experiences. And that's by and large the substance of what I propose to share with all of you. Today, I want to focus our attention on a theme uh, uh, as an introduction to which I I would like to read out a verse from a book in the Old Testament. The book is titled the book of Ecclesiastes. And I'm going to read the first verse from the 12th chapter, which is the last chapter in that book. So the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 1. Let me read it. Remember also your Creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come and the years draw near or which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. For, for our purpose today, it suffices to focus on the few words at the beginning. Remember also your creator in your youth or when you are young. So one of the good things that a young person can do for himself or for herself is to remember one's creator. Now the word used here is very significant. God here is presented or introduced as the creator. And that's the focus of our thinking together in this video. The Bible introduces God to us as the creator. God is the creator, we are the created. So there is a very special relationship between us and God because God is our creator. Now in uh, simple terms, it's a creator who knows his creation best. The extent to which what is created understands itself could be limited, in fact will always be limited. But the one who has created understands it perfectly. So, when this text urges young people to remember the Creator, it's urging young people to remember the fact, first of all, that we are created and therefore there is a Creator. Secondly, also to remember that there is serious limitation to the extent to which and the way in which we understand ourselves. And if we want, if we want to uh, attain perfect, or reliable self-understanding, we need to be in dialogue with or in communion with the Creator. So that's the fundamental position. Now, um, one of the areas 
in which we could fail in, when we are young is in respect of uh, making the appropriate use of the very special gifts, talents and energies that abound in our life when we are young. Youth is a period of exuberance. As a person has left his youth a long time back, I can tell you, looking back, one's youth looks glorious. But unfortunately, glorious only in promise, but, in, but not in performance. And the sadness of one's life is that one's performance did not match the promise that the youth held. You know, when you're young, you experience tremendous, actually unlimited energy. But as years go by, the fund of your energy depletes and you have to make do with a very, very small fraction of it. And therefore, the extent to which you can stretch yourself uh, gets progressively re reduced. Now, that also is a problem. The problem that youth is a period of luxuriance or abundance is also a problem because unless and until we know how to take good care of it, this could become a snare and this could take us far away from what we need to be. Now, coming back to God, it's in this respect that uh, the idea of God or remembering God helps. Remember God. Um, now, when we remember God, what happens? So what's the advantage in remembering God? Now, as I said, um, youth is a period of abundant energies and great blessings, but most people fail to take good advantage of it or make proper use of it. And the main reason for this is that when we are young, our idea of the destination of life is rather vague. In many cases, it's not even existent. Uh, we tend to live from day to day, move from event to event. We drift along. It's a great blessing if in your youth you're able to have a clear idea of where you want to reach and therefore make the best use of the energies, talents, resources, potentialities, possibilities at your disposal. In other words, and this is the main thing I want to underline, remembering your creator when you're young enables you to put it negatively first, then I'll put it positively, uh, enables you to avoid wasting yourself. And I plead with you to understand the significance of this and particularly to do so in relation to the parable Jesus has given us, the parable of the lost son, the parable of the prodigal son about whom it is written in the 15th chapter of Luke's Gospel that he went and wasted his substance. So one of the issues that young people should be mindful of is the danger of wasting yourself. Uh, one of the very traumatic experiences that I had as a teacher in St. Stephen's College was that in 1976, a student of mine by name Stephen Botanis took his life, he committed suicide. The reason was that he became a victim of addiction, he became a drug addict. Then he did not know what to do with his life. He lost his control over his own life completely. And the only option he could think of was to end that burden, life having become a burden, and he did it in this manner. He hanged himself. That made me do a lot of research on the problem of addiction, drug addiction, not alcohol addiction. I concentrated on drug addiction. So that was a particular problem of Stephen Botanis. That resulted in a book much later titled The Dream and the Dragon, where my main argument is that people get into addiction because there is a very powerful blessing God has given to us, namely freedom of choice. The paradox in addiction is that you have to be free in order to fall into the dark alleys 
or to wander into the dark alleys of addiction. But through addiction, you lose your freedom completely. And that's what addiction means. Addiction means complete dependence. So if you don't get your fix at the right time, you begin to turk. You begin to behave in horrible ways. You lose control of yourself completely. You, be, you cease to be a human being. It's a horrible spectacle to watch. It's something sh that should not happen to any human being. I would say it should not happen to any animal either. So, it's a picture, it's a situation of wasting oneself. It's true of every addict that he or she wastes his or her potentialities and possibilities. Many of them, unfortunately, who have fallen into this dark abyss were young men and women of great potential, great possibilities. And because they did not have a sense of direction, an overwhelming sense of direction, at least an empowering sense of direction, very clearly, they allowed themselves to be dragged into these dark, destructive, self-destructive ways of life. And uh, it generated a, a world of tragedies. So the problem that we're dealing with is a very serious one. The inability to take responsible and inspired care of the potentialities and possibilities comprehended in your youth is a heartbreaking tragedy, a sad reality. And that's the reason why I draw your attention to this. So remembering God uh, has this great advantage or imparts this great blessing to a, uh, one's life that it creates in us a clear sense of purpose. In fact, it's impossible to be godly and not to have a high and noble direction in one's life. To be godly is to be well directed. And therefore, it's imp important to be well directed, particularly when we are endowed with great energies. And we waste the potentialities of our youth simply because we lack the sense of direction. And because of that, we do not know what to do with these great blessings. And therefore, these blessings become burdens, stumbling blocks, hindrances. And further down this road, we turn against ourselves and we destroy ourselves. Now, on the other hand, if we remember God in our youth, we know that there is a great purpose behind our life. Each one of us is created in a very special and unique manner. And uniqueness always means a special purpose. Our personality is potentially designed to be attuned to that divine purpose. And blessedness in life, happiness and fulfillment in life, personal dignity, self-confidence, and an overall sense of the grandeur of being human, all these things stem from adhering to that divine purpose, thereby fulfilling the glorious purpose that underlies the uniqueness of our person, our individuality, which is the source of unmatched blessing in life. I cannot think of a greater blessing than this. And therefore, the very first principle that I want to share with you is, please cultivate a clear and empowering sense of purpose in life so that the tremendous energies and potentialities at your command when you are young are used in a meaningful and blessed way. And let me close this video uh, by saying that the quality of your old age depends on the sense of direction by which you lived the days of your youth, how meaningfully, how purposefully, how creatively all that made possible by having a clear sense of purpose and that clear sense of purpose is best derived from remembering God as your creator. Let me co uh, conclude by quoting a few words from one of the historians, historians that I really value a great deal, Arnold Toynbee. His work on the history of human civilization is titled A Study of History. It's in six volumes, perhaps it's the most monumental work in history.
particularly the study of the rise and fall of civilizations. Uh, I don't think there is another work that matches it. Now, uh, Arnold Toynbee spent about 25 long and laborious years in researching and writing this book, or the series of books, books in six volumes, as I said. Obviously, it's a monumental effort. And uh, one who completes such a work obviously has a tremendous sense of fulfillment. So having completed this great work, Arnold Toynbee, in retrospect, looking back, experiences a great sense of blessedness in life. And he, he said the following words. He said, I was singularly blessed by having a great sense of purpose in my life or a great mission in my life. It is this sense of purpose that young people today as a consequence of which many people wander about in life, they drift from day to day, they remain unaware of the great possibilities that are simply within reach. In my own case, I, let me make an open confession to you. I wish I had greater clarity of understanding and a stronger sense of purpose and therefore the discernment as to what is right and what is wrong, what I should do and what I should not, how I should invest my time and in what direction I should develop my personality. If I had that discernment when I was young, say in the years between 15 years of age and 50, if you like, my life would have been far better, far more blessed, it would have been more productive and I would have had a greater sense of self-worth. Now well, that's why I share these thoughts with you. I wish all of you have a tremendous life, a great sense of fulfillment, especially uh, you make strong and enduring investments into making your old age a blessed one. So I have more things to say. I'll be making smaller and smaller videos because I know that uh, the attention span is rather limited. Today I introduced just one idea the blessedness of leading a purposive life. And um, I, may I request you not only to uh, see these videos regularly because I'll build up thoughts in a systematic manner, but also to share it with others so that uh, these insights could also reach others and benefit them. Uh, being a mature human being is also to be in a state of responsibility concerning others. The good things that we experience must also be accessible to others. The blessings that we enjoy must also illumine the life of others. That's the mark of a good human being. So let's all try and attain a sense of responsibility, concern for others, and uh, do whatever we can to make, make life a little better for our fellow human beings. One human being, two, three, four, five, doesn't matter, even just one. If you can bring a ray of light into the life of one human being, our life's purpose is achieved. So, uh, we begin our journey with this. And in the remaining videos, I'll uh, explain. Remaining videos centered on the same. I'll try to explain the idea of old age that the writer of Ecclesiastes is a wisdom book, a book of wisdom. So the writer of Ecclesiastes has a beautiful, um, compellingly accurate idea or what old age entails, and um, in light of, the, of what old age means, you'll be able to appreciate the blessedness and advantages of being young, and that would enable you to wake up to the responsibility to be inspired and responsible stewards of the blessings, resources, powers, and potentialities of being young. So see you soon. Thank you for being part of this journey. All the very best to you, your parents, your siblings, your friends, your colleagues. Let this light spread from person to person and let there be a new awakening in our society. I'm an optimist. I believe that one person with ble blemishless, selfless, unalloyed good sense can make a huge difference in this world. Thank you very much.